Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you're having a good one. A uh, couple of quick notes. You can see that, for the most part, my situation is pretty darn good. You know, with the uh, fuel catalyzers in here. You know, kind of just getting us... We're good. We're good. Um, we're using, you know, the 80,000 RF per tick, basically, but our tree oil is increasing. We're full pretty much across the board with, you know, more power uh, capabilities than what we're utilizing, right? And I haven't even improved these machines to maybe, you know, be more efficient as well, right? So, yeah, this system's working pretty good. It's a little bit of power, um, but all things considered, like, as bad as it sounds, yeah, these, way more efficient, way easier to make way less of a hassle um each one of these is generating 300 you know and i think even the windmills better than all of it at 360 at least at this height and i think you can go higher with it to get even more power um yeah you know it, it and this is the thing that kind of irks me a little bit about the pack and the direction in my opinion passive power should never be more powerful than a correctly set up system um you know and all these arboreal extractors yes this is passive but this is at least a system uh same thing with like my biomass setup over there to ethanol like those should just work they should function and they should be more powerful going through all the systems and everything than you know one solar panel right like i have this this is 360 right here these two one windmill one windmill that means no spruce trees no 16 arboreal extractors two fractionating stills right like all of these things cost a lot and all i can get out of it is 360 rf now yes i'm aware we can work our way through and and make it a little bit more efficient and get a little bit more out of it but this should be like 600 plus starting out just because like i can build one of those for pretty much cheaper <laughs> so that's one of my qualms with the whole uh system or setup okay um equally over here i've done most of the automation most of it i think i have platinum in there i do okay so we'll put that guy in there get that running I was kind of just manually adding those. I don't plan on going to the nether a ton, okay, for, for my mining. I may do it occasionally, but, uh, yeah, not on an every single time basis. So, yeah, one of those things. Uh, lead, you can go there. Perfect. All right, so all of these are working great. We have them automatically exporting. We have the dust, so copper, gold. Um, we have the iron, tin, nickel, pl uh, not platinum yet, all going into redstone furnaces to get cooked up and then transferred over to our main hub over there. So that's working great. This guy is set and solid. Um, this one is done, right? Do not put it in the chest. That wasn't the purpose. Uh, yeah, and these ones are going to be set right away. So overall, pretty good. Um, one thing that changed here is I did add a compactor and I upgraded it and I added a gear working die to it. Now, what we can do there is we can actually set this up to basically house, you know, a certain amount of gears. Now, I made a whole bunch off camera over yonder at our immersive engineering section um, for, you know, just to have, right? So let's go grab at least those. And then we can at least start our first compactor. So these ones were kind of the staples that I went with um, early on anyways, right? So these are the gears that I'm like, you know what? I seem to be using these a lot. Let's get these guys in. So I have four here. And that's exactly what we'll use in this setup here. Now, I think I'll probably limit this to like just one stack i think just one stack here and then i might have another one over there that's just one stack but yeah this guy will basically 
be our gear machine as we need it. The other thing that I've been debating doing is just not even transferring them over there and waiting for Applied Energistics to have it as like a make-as-you-go type scenario. So that's that's another thing altogether. Um, so I did make that one off camera. And what else? That's really about it. And the gear working die. I made all the engines, right? We have all of this stuff done. Um... Yeah, I made a reinforced upgrade kit just to have it so that we could get the signal in one. And we're kind of just progressing down the line here. So I did prepare a couple of different things. Um, so let's just sleep. By the way, I have a sleep charm now from Dark Utilities. Very cool item. It basically makes you sleep instantly, which is pretty freaking awesome in my opinion. So yeah, you basically sleep instantly. I'm good with that. I am good with that. Do we have any problems around here? No, doesn't look too, too bad. No creepers or anything like that. Um, so one of the things here, as you can see, I am out of power. We've drained this entire cell, which is crazy. But in the config, in the config, um, I learned that you can change the radius up to 32. And thank you to, I believe it was Connor... Um, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Anyways, um, that let me know that that's a possibility, right? So that I could up my system and mine more things. Mine more things in one go, right? So our radius went from 10 all the way up to 32 in our config settings. So as you can see, we have 11,000 more things to mine in this area. 11,000. That's a lot of things. That's a lot of things. But what I want to do is I want to just kind of do a quick little sample of a couple of uh, resources here just to kind of sort of make sure that things are working as intended. Okay. So this is kind of our first official test to see, all right, do I have all of these ores stored in my system for one? And for two, does it work? So... If I go like that and I click, ah, I don't have lead and silver ore. Yes, I think I remember that I didn't have these. So we'll add those to the system here. They don't have anywhere to go though. So that's one of the things that, uh, yeah, we'll monitor as we go. So we'll do a quick double check. I'm pretty sure it's all working or it will all be working. Everything should be starting to roll. Aluminum is kicking through. Good. We are cooking up iron. We are cooking up gold. We are harvesting gold. We are harvesting iron, and everything seems to be more or less working as intended. So that's good. That's really, really good. That's exactly what we want to see. Um, that's exactly what we wanted to see with the system. So, yeah, there's the lead and silver. I need to add another pulverizer is basically what's going on there. Okay. So everything's working. Everything's working as intended. Our power's pretty much drained out, which means this guy is pretty much full again, which is awesome. Uh, and that means that we can kind of just take it. I like how fast it is at uh, updating uh, because I have the full backup. And then while this one's draining, the other one's filling and getting our backup back up. Back up, back, back, back up. Back up to the backup. Exactly. So, yeah, a lot of good things going on there. So, we're going to let that go. It's going to take a while to mine all of those items, but we're going to let that thing cruise on through while we work on a couple of other things. That area is still a little bit of a mess. I know I promised that it wouldn't be, but guess what? It still is. It still is. Down here, we're up to 6,400 UU. That's good. I like that. Um, and I think we're still, yeah, we got lots of power cruising right now. I think it's building up again. I keep kind of just coming over here. Oh no, that's working. Okay. Yeah. I keep coming over here just to like double check on things, make sure everything's working as intended and just check on things, uh, check on my UU, right. For machine frames and stuff like that. It's really, really efficient for all that stuff. So yeah. And then let's head on up here. And let's build some more things. Let's check on the mob farm here quickly, though. Ooh, iridium cleaver? Dang. 
Did you guys see that? That looked good. It got it got deleted. It got deletenated. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So let's head on back up. We're good down there, and let's make some things. So one of the first quests uh, that we have to carry on with, and I've already kind of figured out, you know, this stuff, right? We got it. I actually went over to our other area, and I removed the sawmill from over there. Um, because I'm going to replace it with this sawmill pretty much going forward. So boom, sawmill basic and I already have myself the resin funnel as well. So that'll be a double completion for our stuff, claiming that those loot boxes. Very nice. Now we already had the induction smelter built. So exactly that. And we already had rich slag made as well. Cause we did that last time. So we just got. A whole bunch of loot box and that is a huge reward wow wow another sp spawner seeker that's always useful cheddar and sour cream potato chips i think i've already eaten those sadly uh, this thing's gonna go ding ding for a little bit here <laughs> but that's okay all right uh we'll put the drawer controller in there i'll just put that guy in there as well some pretty good rewards though some pretty good rewards um, next up is the energetic infuser. I kind of want to polish these off nice and quickly here. And I do have the energetic infuser ready to go as well as then the fluid transposer. So those guys are set and ready to go. Very nice. Very, very nice. Just kind of cruising through a couple things here. Lapis lazuli ball lock. Oh, only four of them. Rip. That's not even worth it. That's not even worth the salt that we've made. Anyways, we'll just transfer back to regular old lapis. There we go. And there we go. Awesome. Okay. So we just made a whole bunch of things. A whole bunch of things, uh, which is great. The fluid transposer, the energetic. Um, and last but not least is the magma crucible. Now, I think I have everything for it. Let's double check. Um, yep. Good, good, good. These are all good things. I think it's a reception coil. It is. Boom. And a fused quartz. Is that all that it is? Bam, bam. Magma crucible as well. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So we've more or less completed most of the machines uh, from thermal expansion. Launch pad. That's a lot of launch pads. That's a lot of launch pads. Okay. Okay. So, with that, we can do a couple of different things. Now, the energetic infuser, I'm actually going to pipe in directly next to this guy. And the reason being is, this is a charger. That's all it's going to do. It'll charge our stuff. Now, I don't know if this actually charges in there. It doesn't. You need an MFSU for the quantum stuff. But if I had other chargeables in my system or anything like that, it would charge them. It's not a very good charger, but we'll keep it here for now just so that we are aware of, you know, everything, right? So we'll kind of just keep it like so, and it'll be ready to be used whenever we feel like using it. The sawmill, I definitely want to set up. It's going to, I think, go right above. Mm, no, we're going to have another compactor, probably. Um... It kind of needs to go like here. You know what? Let's put it here. Let's build it right into this system here. Right? I mean, we have cabling right there. So we can do an advanced connector just like so. And we can call this sawmill. Right? And resin. Okay? So it's a resin sawmill is what we want to basically be telling the system. Like so. And we need an upgrade to add our resin funnel to that. Now I have the reinforced upgrade kit. I guess I could just do that one, can't I? Or do you need the other one first? I think you need the other one first, you do. So I need to make a hardened one and that's really all I need. Um, so let's go quickly make ourselves a kit so that we can get this resin one set up appropriately. Uh, kit, hardening, Invar bronze gear. That's one of the ones that, you know, 
we really need to get automated as well. One, two, three, four. Good. And I think it was just redstone otherwise. I think that's all it was. Better double check though before I get too carried away. That is correct. So we can at least use our compactor now. Um, test that guy out. See how slow or fast it may or may not be. Oh yeah, that's, that's more than fine. We're good with that. All right. And kit. Done. And done. All right. We got that installed. Now we can install our resin funnel now the cool thing about this is well the resin we will be able to put it into our fractionating stills right which is good it's very very good um we might need i don't know if we can leave it just open yeah i'm not sure we might need to upgrade these to advanced uh underneath here so that we can tell it to input resin as well from our sawmill, right? So I'll have to kind of play that one a little bit more by ear as we get closer to it. So yeah, just those little things, those little things. And then also we need to set up the uh, magma crucible. Mm, I don't want to do that there. I think I want to do fluid somewhere else. I know that this wall is getting pretty full, right? So now with the magma stuff um, or all of the the fluids, there's what, three different types, I think? Uh, let's see. I mean, I know we can do more, but out of the thermal expansion stuff, I think there's mainly the three types that we're going to be looking at. Things like um, we can do redstone, we can do resonant right uh resonant ender whatever that one is yeah like we need we need one for this the enderium because to get litharite you either mine it or you fluid transpose it so that's definitely one that we're going to probably need at least to be open to begin with um so what i might do is i think i'll plan to do this here with our fluid transposer there so what's going to happen is we're going to have our input from the back and our output out the bottom and then this guy we're going to have input there and output out the back okay for whatever we're putting in here now we'll run the cabling and all that a little bit later on um i don't I don't want to set this one up yet. I want a tank in between as well so that we have a little bit of a buffer. And I'm not using my gargantuan drum for that either. So um, this guy here, I need to get myself uh, set up for what we need it for. So this is going to be the sawmill drawer, which is great. And that will be doing spruce wood. So... We can set up that quickly. I'm going to set this up. I'm going to go grab a drawer, all of that type of stuff. And uh, then we will cruise on back and see where we're at. So remember how I said this machine's not that great? Yeah. I made myself a flux capacitor reinforced. As you can see, it only fills it at 200 RF. And we have like 20 million in this thing, which is ridiculous. So yeah, just one of those things. Um, I just wanted to get that bucket of resin uh, because for whatever reason, it's not pulling out of the machine. And the other thing too, and maybe it's something I'm doing wrong, but it's not pulling out the, the setup here correctly either. So yeah... I'm a little bit uh, conflicted um, as to what's going on, to be honest. Um, so it's not putting in spruce wood. I've tried pretty much every single setting, and on here I have spruce wood, matching metadata, matching MBT. I've tried turning them off, and then you get jungle wood, redwood, oak, basically everything but spruce. Um, or a dictionary doesn't seem to do anything. So I don't know how to configure that appropriately for what we need. Um, so that's not great. That's not great. Not great at all, right? So yeah, just one of those things. I did not know that you could just bucket out of this. That's kind of nice. 
Uh, anyways, we'll just remove that and put it back over here. Um, there we go. And it's dumped. Excellent. That's really all I wanted that flux capacitor for. And I brought you guys back in to kind of sort of see that um, as well. Just some little problem solving stuff that's going on here. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I got jungle wood planks and redwood planks and all of that stuff. And I haven't even gotten spruce, you know, the one that I want. So, yeah, I'm a little bit confused into the setup. If you guys have any tips on how to set that up for what we're trying to do, please, please hit me up. Because, yeah, that would be swell. That would be very, very swell. By the way, just to let you know, um, I was wondering why my power was going down so fast. Well, when I increased the radius, guess what? It almost doubled the amount of power that we need for this thing to work, which is fine, but it's just going to be a little bit more demanding on our power system overall. So, yeah, that's the other thing. The other thing that I've kind of been pondering is I think it's time for an ender chest of sorts, right? So, yeah, so our backup isn't even really a backup at this point in time. We just need more power, and we're going to have to wait it out uh, for now. So... I could also just reduce the radius down a little bit to make it work more accordingly, but that's that's I can I can deal with that later on. I can deal with that down the road. I'm not too concerned. We will get there eventually. I know a lot of people are always concerned about my systems, but uh, I'll get it handled. Have no fear. One way or another, it'll get dealt with eventually. <laughs> All right. Um, other than that, uh, let's take a quick look through here again. So we got the magma crucible. We got the fluid transposer. I mean, that means that we could pretty much start getting things like um, expansion capacitors. Yeah, rapid wireless charging of capacitors. That could be nice. We might be able to get that. Um but yeah, outside of that, we're kind of at a point here where it's, okay, thermal expansion has been, we've explored a decent amount of it. You know, there's a lot that we've done already in this mod. And if we look back at the getting started, we have the Enderium sharpening kit. So let's actually look at Enderium. I have thermal expansion as a whole opened up here. And I want to kind of take a look at what all is going to be required to make enderium at this point in time right so a standard piece of enderium in an induction smelter requires an enderium blend with the sand that's pretty straightforward um, or lead platinum alloy with resonant ender okay fluid infuser same thing melter obviously you need the enderium blend for that there's the enderium base one that's Ender IO, that would be nice. But anyways, this Enderium blend is not overly complicated to make. It's just some pulverized lead, pulverized platinum, and a resonant ender bucket, which is basically just four ender pearls. So it's not bad to do um, in a setup. Now, I haven't hooked up the magma crucible and all that yet, so I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to head on over here to our nuclear craft area where I've prepared a few additional things for this episode. Huzzah! We have the melter. Very nice, very nice. The melter is going to go right there. Beautiful. We can now, basically, melt down our ender pearls. There's four of them. Let's melt them down, right? So this works the same way that a you know, magma crucible would effectively work. We're going to make an isotope separator. We are going to make a salt mixer. And we are also going to make an ingot former. Look at us go. Just bam, bam, bam. Polishing them all off. Um, I'm going to claim all these rewards because we might as well. Um, there's so many other things that we do need to make with nuclear craft. Um, but these are some of the main starting out items, right? Oh, nice. Another robot. A soup premium watering can whoa hearty breakfast very nice and congealed slime block red slime very nice um but anyway so this a thousand buckets or a thousand right 
of Resonant Ender. Pretty straightforward. We can collect it just like by clicking on it. Nothing too crazy, right? It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easily done. Um, so I'm just kind of cheating because I don't have the other one set up yet. But ultimately, we're going to have a Resonant Ender on farm. Now that we're get, we have a decent amount of Ender Pearls, they're continually coming through. Um, that'll be something that we we start to work on for sure. Um, I got another robot, hey? Eh? I mean, those are nice. Saves me time of crafting them. Uh, but that's really about it. Okay. Uh, so we have our resident ender bucket. We have a whole bunch of lead. And you know what? I know we have some over here even. So let's go get ourselves some platinum and some lead. Yeah. Platinum and lead. And we'll try to make ourselves the first little bit... Uh, I think it was only three, right? Anyways, we'll throw these in here for now. And I'll just pull out the pulverized setup. And one platinum. Very nice. So this guy right here, boom, like that, gives us the Enderium Blend. Very nice. Now, Enderium Blend can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, but one of them is with that induction smelter with an output potential of regular slag. Now, this is something that we can, we will be setting up automatically um, to do. We could also just melt it back in that melter. But for now, I'm just going to throw it in this one, and we'll pull out our goods accordingly. Very nice. Okay. So, what this will do is we need to get back into the getting started an Enderium sharpening kit. While we have the Enderium, we just need to get the kit. And that will complete another quest in the getting started. Which I don't really feel like is getting started anymore, is it? It's more like getting advanced. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Um, okay, let's do this. Let's go to the sharpening kit. Does this work? Mm, I think it has to be molten. I think it has to be molten. Uh, let's do a quick check here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, smelting, yeah, okay, enderium, boom, yeah, sure enough. It does have to be molten down to get that sharpening kit. So, pretty easily done. We will smelt down two things of enderium. Now, enderium's a really nice, uh, really nice item. It really is. You know, you can get the upgrade kits for decently cheap. Lumium's a little bit of a pain to make. Um, you can just start upgrading other things that we have. You know, we could look into the satchel. You know, there's the exchanger, which I'd love to get as well. You know, watering cans, servos, all of the advanced stuff from thermal expansion pretty much requires some form of enderium. So a lot of really good things, including the enderium cooler, which would be, per mm, that might work. That might work out very well, actually. Huh. It's also used in things like the Ultimate Crafting, the Quantum Compressor, you know, some of the more advanced recipes uh, down the way, right? I'm trying to think if there's anything else where it's like, yeah, this is exactly what we needed it for. I don't think so. Outside of it's just involved in other recipes throughout. So uh, we do not need an ingot cast. We need a sharpening cast. There we go. Is this thing? It's still melting, right? Oh boy, I didn't even think to be like, oh, can this even smelt? 650, yeah, okay, it's melting. Uh, so temperature of 100 C, right? So good thing to note, good thing to double check that we didn't need like blazing pyrothium or something in our smelter, which is something we could probably do at this point in time uh, automatically. I'm pretty sure we could. Uh, but anyways, for now, we'll leave it. For now, we'll leave it. All right, almost done. Let's go. Give me my enderium. Give me my sharpening kit. Maybe we'll, uh, yeah, you know what? We'll sharpen this guy. Why not? Why not? Keep it all in the same pick. You know, advance as we go. So the getting started, we got a little bit of nuclear craft. I haven't even looked at those other items of nuclear craft, but they're going to be swell as well. Um, I think I need flint for this, right? Man, it's been a long time since I did anything like this. Boom, there we go. Enderium kit. So beforehand, it was 
Osglo glass. Now it's in Deerium. Beautiful. So we can get this and uh, sure, platinum ore. I don't really need more ender pearls at this point in time. So yeah. And next above that is Terra Steel. Terra Steel. And that gives us infusion crystals. Very nice. Actually, we could probably do that right now if I broke down some machines and or some chest plates and stuff like that. But uh, we might even have like we have one there. Yeah, I could pretty much get the Terra Steel one. Because I have Terra Steel chest plates and whatnot. And I'm pretty sure I can pulverize these. Oh no, it's Arc Furnace one. Okay, no, I can't. But still, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, for now, I'm going to throw the slag in there. We have the Enderium. I need to find... I need to get a few more compacting chests, actually, to get some more Enderium where it needs to go. Um, we do not have a spot for Platinum. It can go right there. I don't think I've automated that yet either. So... Yeah, so many little things to kind of work on. Um, I don't think I have red slime balls anywhere either. So we'll just store those. All of my storage is full. <laughs> All of it. Everywhere is full. It's crazy. This guy. I've never used this guy. Oh my. Is this just straight up like a massive watering can? Holy crikey. Um... That's a really nice item if it is. So I can come over here to like this farm and be like, bam. Oh my. Well, that's a nice reward. <laughs> that's a real nice reward. All right. Cool. I am very, very happy with that. You had a lot of good gear on you, sir. Where did you farm all that gear, cheater? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, this watering can is overpowered beyond all belief. Um, very cool. I'm very happy that it's so overpowered. But also, it's really overpowered. So, um, that's sweet. I'm a big fan. Very, very big fan. Now, if we go over to our... Oh, yeah. Let's go to our farms. So we can, like, just maximize this thing to the nines. Oh, let's go. Look at that. Yes, that is amazing. All right, cool. Very, very happy we got this watering can. That is ridiculous. Uh, it would have been helpful before I did all this, though. I'm not going to lie. Would have been a lot more helpful before I did all of those things. Um, but yeah, right here, this is all that really matters. I can come over here to the wheat farm and really just jazz it up across the board. So yeah, really good stuff. Push this thing into extra overtime, basically. Look at that. Go to town. Awesome. Okay, very, very cool. I know we're getting a little bit uh, sidetracked and whatnot here. Um, I'm going to head on back. I'm very happy with my watering can, though. That is great. And, uh, yeah, so, see? Loot bags can still be good is what I'm getting at here. So, I think that's going to be it, though. We're definitely at wrapping up point. So, I will catch you all next time. Thank you all so much for being with us today. And uh, maybe we'll look into some of this stuff a little bit uh, here where we start getting into some nuclear stuff. Um, salt mixer, I think, just blends things, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. All the ores. I don't know how much we have to use this. I'm really not all that familiar with nuclear craft. I've heard good things, um, but I'm not overly familiar with the mod. So we definitely need to kind of sort of figure all this out as we go so anyways uh that'll be it i'm gonna throw these guys in there and along with that for now and uh yeah i'll catch you all next time bye bye for now see ya